Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. Let's take a few moments to discover how easy it is to stitch together a high dynamic range panorama in Lightroom Classic, where each of the individual panels in the panorama are made up of HDR images. In this example, I've captured three bracketed exposures for each of the six panels that will be used to create the panorama of Badwater Basin. This HDR panorama is going to be stitched horizontally, but Lightroom Classic can also stitch vertical panoramas and multi-row panoramas. Lightroom Classic will automatically apply lens correction profiles for all of the exposures if it can detect which profiles to use. If not, then it will display an alert asking you to apply a lens profile correction for the best results. Lightroom Classic will always remove chromatic aberration as a part of the merge. All right, with all of the images selected, I'll choose the Photo menu and then select Photo Merge and HDR Panorama. This command is going to help automate the process for us by first merging the bracketed exposures and then stitching the resulting HDR files as a panorama. We can choose from our three projections. The spherical will align and transform the images as if they're mapped to the inside of a sphere, and it works really well when creating a 360 degree panoramas or a multi-row panorama, especially if you're capturing the images with a short focal length lens, such as a 24 millimeter lens. Cylindrical is also well suited for creating really wide panoramas. It uses the center image as the reference image, and when it stitches the other images to it, it'll match the overlapping content as if each image were mapped to the inside of the cylinder. Now with a really wide panorama like this one, this image may not work well with the perspective option. And that's because perspective selects a middle image as the reference image, and then it distorts the other images on either side to match that. But it often results in what looks like a bow tie with the images at either side taller than the center. And yes, in fact, it wasn't able to merge these photos. So I'll return to cylindrical. And we can see that we have a lot of empty space around the top, the sides, and the bottom of this merged panorama. But we can easily take care of the edges. If I use the boundary warp slider, Lightroom Classic will reshape the edges of the panorama to fill that rectangular canvas area. It works really well on organic images, but on images with straight lines or architectural features, the process of warping the image to fill the surrounding canvas may bend vertical and horizontal lines. Now, if we don't want to or we can't use the boundary warp, we can instead choose the fill edges option. Fill edges will help us to eliminate those uneven edges using Adobe's content aware fill technology. Or we can use the auto crop command, which will remove the transparent edges and it's non-destructive. So even though we're cropping in this dialogue, we can modify the crop in the resulting merged panorama using the crop tool in the develop module. If I enable auto settings, that's the same as clicking the auto button in the develop module. All of the changes that the auto settings make are completely non-destructive and I can edit them or modify them at any time using the basic panel. I can choose to create a stack to automatically stack the source images and the resulting HDR panorama, and the HDR panorama will appear at the top of the stack. Now, if there is movement between exposures, such as water or blowing leaves or people walking, and you want to apply deghosting, well, you can see that that option is missing in this dialogue. So instead of this one step process, you would first need to select each of the sets of bracketed exposures and merge them to HDR with the desired deghosting settings. Then you could select all of the resulting HDR images and use the photo merge to stitch the panorama. Now, because not all of the adjustments from the develop module do carry over to the resulting merged panorama, I typically wait and make any necessary adjustments to the newly created merged and stitched raw file. Healing, however, is carried over. So if there are dust spots or distracting elements that you want to remove, you can do that either before or after merging the images. 
All right, let's go ahead and merge these images together. And while it's merging, we could continue working on other images because the merge commands do all of their computations in the background. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to cut to the final image. So here is our newly created 16-bit floating point HDR panorama. We can see that it is a raw file. In this case, it's a DNG file and that the source images are stacked with the original. We can click on the number in order to expand the stack and we can see all of the original source files. But notice that to save space, the intermediate HDR images that the photo merge command created have been automatically deleted. The name of the panorama has been appended with the suffix dash HDR dash pano, making them easy to find when I use the text filter, set it to file name, and then enter in HDR dash pano. All right, if we want to batch process HDR panoramas, we can select one set of images and create the first HDR panorama using the settings that you want to apply to all of the batched HDR panoramas. Then we can select another set of source files, choose photo, stacking, and group these into a stack. We can also use the keyboard shortcut Command-G on Mac or Control-G on Windows. So to expedite it, I'll select these images and use the shortcut. Then we just need to select the stacks, choose Photo, and then Photo Merge, and choose HDR Panorama. Each stack of images will be merged individually using the previously used settings. All right, to save time, let's jump ahead and with the two images selected, I'll tap the N key in order to preview both of our newly created high dynamic range panoramas in Lightroom Classic. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.